Hi, this is Lee Phillips. I want to talk about durable powers of attorney for two seconds. It's one of what I consider the four things that you need in estate planning. You need the will, the living revocable trust, the durable power of attorney, and the living will. The durable power of attorney handles your matters when you can't function for yourself. You become incompetent. And actually, statistically, you're like five times more likely to be incompetent next week than you are to be dead next week. And dealing with an incompetent person's property is actually harder than dealing with a dead person's property. So, the family needs to have the assurance that you have what we call a durable power of attorney. Now, the power of attorney is a document that allows somebody else to stand in and then represent you in this matter. I remember when my uncle went to the Korean War. He had a pink convertible Thunderbird, I wish we still had it, and he gave Grandpa a power of attorney to sell the Thunderbird after he went into the military. I remember that. I was only like five or six years old, but I still remember that. And Grandpa sold the Thunderbird. I liked the Thunderbird. I could ride around with my uncle and with the top down. It was kind of fun. That's a power of attorney. In the 80s, we decided, well, yeah, powers of attorney are good, but the problem with the power of attorney is, as soon as the individual becomes incompetent or dies, it's gone. So if my uncle had been shot, wounded, been unable to manage his own affairs, the power of attorney he gave grandpa would have been gone. Well, that's nuts. The reason we need the power of attorney is when the guy can't handle things on his own. So they created, in each state has passed laws, which allow us to have what are called durable powers of attorney. The Canadians call it an enduring power of attorney. It endures, it, it, it goes past the point where the individual becomes incompetent. It's durable past that point. And what it does is it allows an individual, the agent, we call them, to come in and manage that person's assets, their business affairs, whatever the power of attorney says they can manage, when the person becomes incompetent. Now, your durable power of attorney needs a provision in it that says how you're going to be declared incompetent. Uh, often it's two doctors sign a statement. In a lot of my powers of attorney, I have two doctors and each one of the kids and the spouse, if they're available, to sign this statement that says, yeah, dad's out of it. And at that point, the agent kicks in and can manage all of the affairs. If the document is silent on how we determine incompetency, then we have to go to court. We have to get somebody named as the agent, somebody named as the guardian conservator for the individual. And that's what we want to avoid with the power of attorney, the durable power of attorney. So make sure that your document has that trigger point in it, and then it will describe, it'll go on for pages, some over 40, 50 pages long. The agent can do this, the agent can do this, the agent can do this. We need to specifically set out what the agent can do for the principal, the guy who made the power of attorney. But it's a critical part to your state plan today in fact, the rest homes and the hospitals, a lot of them won't even let you in the door until you have your durable power of attorney.